Hello, I'm Sue Romanoff from Edison Group. Today, I'm joined by Carlos Bueza, CEO of Horizon. Hello, Carlos. Good morning, so how are you doing today? Great, thank you. Um, so you specialize in epigenetic therapies, and it, it seems to garner a lot of industry attention. So it would be helpful if you could share some background and why there's so much interest and excitement. Yeah, indeed. I mean, in the last year, as we have seen um, an explosion of data on, on how epigenetic mechanisms help to regulate our um, cells, our genes, our chromosomes in the constant changing for adapting to the changing um, um, uh, um, uh, changing uh, circumstances of life. And also we know now that epigenetics can be, and it is involved in different disorders. So um, from the early years, we have been progressing and we know now that there are many, many different epigenetic molecules, enzymes, proteins, who is, which are basically um, uh, conformating the way that chromatin is folded and uh, and um, making this kind of choreography to make the chromatin open and let these regions of the chromosome to be active or the other way around to be silenced and to be packed and this is constantly happening in the cell so um, um we know now that this complex choreography can be also an entry point for targeted therapies in some specific diseases not only in oncology where we where we know that a number of um, methylating agents and demethylating agents are very much involved on, on the basics of different tumors, but also in other diseases, in immunological disorders, in viral disorders, viral infections, and also particularly in CNS disorders, in neurodegenerative disorders, and in security. It's fascinating that when you do uh, genomic uh, studies in big population, the GWAS studies, the genes which are popping up as the more involved or related or, or, or closely related to some specific psychiatric disorders are genes involved in the methylation and in the demethylations of the histones. So this is clearly indicating us that, um, yeah, epigenetics is playing a fascinating role on the initiation of the diseases and it is, is giving us um, a very interesting entry point for targeted therapies. So, yeah, as a follow on to that, it seems that uh, you've gleaned some insight and, and it's guided you to focus both of your lead assets on the LSD1 inhibitor. Uh, it's interesting how it's done across the CNS and oncology indications. W what's the rationale and how is that so? Well, the rationale was uh, we, uh, Horizon is a company that has um, uh, been driven by science and our data were driving them, driving them uh, here. Uh, driving us here, um, uh, we we were a, a, before being a, a, an epigenetic company. We were a functional genomic company, and we were for a number of years studying early biomarkers that were on um, that we were finding on the autoxic brain brains of people that had died with no signs of uh, uh, CNS disorders yet, and we saw there in the initial histopathological lesions of uh, preclinical disease or subclinical diseases, we saw there a number of very interesting biomarkers. And one of them was bringing us basically to LSD1. So that was our initial sparkling origin, seminal idea why we should go after LSD1. But of course, very early, um, this, the scientific community was pointing at, uh, at LSD1 as a fascinating oncological target. So we were at that moment deciding to divide our efforts in two to, to set up a twin program in, in medicinal chemistry to develop optimized LSD1 inhibitors for CNS disorders and optimized LSD1 inhibitors for oncological disorders. And since then we have been developing the drugs in, in both indications and has been a, an effort which has been also benefiting from the lessons learned in one of the programs to, to populate the, or to enrich the other. So this kind of cross-pollination has been very useful and has ma made us very efficient on the development of, of our compound. So that's also explain how with limited resources, we are right now having two programs in phase two um, and with a clear registrational pathway 
in both cases in oncology with Yadad and SATA were LSD1 inhibitor, which is the most potent LSD1 inhibitor under the uh, under clinical development, and in Bafidenstat, which is um, um, uh, placing us in a very unique competitive position because we are the one and only developing epigenetics in CNS disorders and the one and only developing an LSD1 inhibitor for CNS disorders. So that places us in a in a very unique competitive position. Great. I, I mean, that that is very exciting. I think we look forward to the Portico top line readouts in, in, in the first quarter, which is coming up really soon, uh, especially since there's not a lot of practical therapies for borderline personality disorder. Could you give us context onto the opportunity and the unmet need really that's out there in and maybe context to the uh, upcoming data what you, what we should be looking for yeah glad to do so uh, i mean the the commercial opportunity uh, let me summarize is immense but before i i i develop this uh, uh, with more granularity uh, let me let me start by the beginning. When we were starting the, this program in CNS a few years ago, people were a bit, was a bit skeptic because in the past, other um, other epigenetic molecules on the early years, particularly ASDAC inhibitors, uh, have proven to be well not not suitable for CNS disorders. They were having plenty of side effects, uh, plenty of uh, uh, I mean the, the 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 tolerability was not good enough for being developed in CNS disorders. So we were very much aware of that, and that's why we were uh, basically willing to be sure that we were having a totally clean and tolerable um, LSD1 inhibitor for CNS disorders. And we have. We have right now those almost 500 people uh, in different clinical studies, and we have right now a profile of tolerability, which is not different at all with the people who have been randomized on the placebo groups. So we don't see any kind of, um, of course, organ toxicity uh, or anything like that. But importantly, we don't see what you see very often in psychiatric, uh, in psychiatric uh, agents or in psychiatric drugs. We don't see weight gain. We don't see drowsiness. We don't see sedation. We don't see somnolence. Uh, we don't see loss of sexual appetite. We don't see extrapyramidal symptoms. So, um, the, and of course, we don't see any hematological uh, toxicity. So it is a very safe and tolerable molecule. Um, this molecule was uh, very early being explored in different clinical trials, but we were particularly intrigued by the fact that we and others uh, had proven that in preclinical models, in different preclinical models, LSD1 inhibition seems to be capable of strongly inhibit aggression, extraordinarily um, enhancing sociability, and um, improving cognition and memory. So we were really um, uh, fascinated, intrigued by that. And because of this, we were uh, doing a preliminary trial, reimagined, was a basket trial in three psychiatric disorders, borderline personality disorder, ADHD, and autism, and all the three types of patients, the three groups of patients were having a commonality. They were very aggressive, very agitated. After two months of treatment, we were able to reduce in a drastic manner, statistically significant manner, the aggressivity, the agitation. But not only that, in BPD, in borderline personality patients, we saw first a overall improvement of the severity of the disease. And second, we saw a drastic reduction of the suicidal ideation. So for all these, we were de developing the drug in, in, in borderline personality disorder. And you were asking me about the, the, the clinical opportunity or the commercial opportunity. Well, I mean, borderline personality disorder is a prevalent large syndication. We are counting about 9 million people in the US and Europe. And for these people who are suffering for very strong symptoms, I mean, these people are agitated, are having very extreme interactions with their close ones, which are basically hampering to have a normal a social or, 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 or labor or life. And they are harming themselves. They are killing themselves. There is nothing approved for these people. So we are the only drug that in a phase two A, uh, in this reimagined trial, as I mentioned, we were showing clear signs of improvement on those people. And there is very little competition in the space. 
So we might be the first company, if the data that we are going to announce very soon are positive, we might be the first company ever in phase three in this indication, probably one study ahead of potential approval. So the, uh, the opportunity is enormous because when you translate that to commercial forecast, you always get, you always land in territories which are basically forecasting more than 3 billion per year of dollars on peak sales. So the, the, the opportunity, as I said, is enormous. And uh, on that on that on that basis, we we started um, uh, three years ago, Portico, and Portico is a phase two B randomized one one uh, with placebo um, uh, trial, um, uh, uh, where we basically um, treat borderline personality uh, disorder patients for fourteen weeks to try to um, uh, determine if we are able to reduce the aggression first, and second, if we are able to improve the overall status of the disease, to, to reduce the severity of the disease. These two primary endpoints uh, have been discussed with the FDA, are independent. So that means that if we, we get a hit in one, we can declare a success on the trial. And we are um, uh, uh, having on the secondary endpoints and on the exploratory endpoints, a number of other um, um, uh, endpoints measuring aggression and uh, overall improvement by different scales. So we, we, we have a very rich uh, clinical trial here. We are also measuring anxiety. We are also measuring depression. We are also measuring cognition. So it is really a, a very rich clinical trial. This trial has been run mainly in the U.S. Most, more, more, more than 60% of the patients have been recruited in the U.S. in 19 centers in total, but also in Europe, in Germany, in Serbia, in Spain, in Bulgaria. Um, so um, it's a trial that um, we did um, with the, uh, uh, in accordance, in, in agreement with the FDA, we did a pre-specified interim analysis in March once the first 90 patients had completed the treatment and to our satisfaction, satisfaction the, tri the, the results of this uh, interim analysis was that the trial was not futile and that we didn't have to increase the number of patients initially, um, initially planned. So with all this, uh, we got the last patient out in, uh, in November, early November. So um, now we, we have finalized the study. We are frantically uh, curing the, the, the data and, and closing the, the, trying to close as soon as possible the, 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 the data um, to get this data available to the biostatisticians. So we hope that in the early weeks of uh, 2024, for six weeks of 2024, maybe during the JP Morgan, so be be uh, be attend to us. Um, so we we plan to to communicate the top line data. And this, for the reasons I was posing before, I think that this might be a transformational catalyst for this company. Right. So so switching over to your most advanced oncology program, Frida, how's that progressing, and how's that differentiated from others in AML? Yeah, well, we are very excited about our, about our oncological program as well. Yadavemstat has been a molecule which uh, has been proven to be very safe. And we were presenting last year um, a very nice data on ALISA, um, the prior study, which was our proof of concept in leukemia. So LSD1 has been very well documented how it works in leukemia at the molecular level. We were presenting magnifica, magnificent data um, in, in ASH, in, uh, in um, fit AML patients, first-line AML patients, uh, in combination with isacitidine, 80% uh, of responses, very uh, good quality responses, 66% of CRCRIs, uh, very long responses. We have patients with more than four years that they are still under treatment after the finalization of the trial in remission. Um, uh, so uh, with all these, we wanted to, uh, uh, we had demonstrated the proof of concept. The molecule is really having antileukemic activity. And the question was how we place this molecule in a competitive way to move, in, to move forward as soon as possible for a potential accelerated approval. And that was, uh, our choice was to uh, refractory relapse 
AML patients harboring the FLIT3 mutation. So we and others have demonstrated that um, uh, uh, FLIT3 inhibitors, gilteritinib and Yadadenstat, have an enormous and extraordinary synergism. And that's why we were um, uh, with the FDA agreeing on FRIDA. FRIDA is the first part of two trials. Uh, FRIDA is the dose finding uh, phase 1B trial in which we are going to, to identify the minimal uh, 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 efficient dose, efficacious dose in, uh, in this uh, AML uh, refractory relapse patients with FLIFIC3 mutations. Um, um, and we can do so very efficiently because we have a method to quantitatively assess um, the target engagement of our compound in LSD1. So with this, um, um, once we get this done and we can compare the target engagement, pick the PD data, the PK data, the safety and tolerability data, and the efficacy data, we can move forward in a randomized trial, a, a, a continuation of FRIDA in randomized trials, which we believe that we could, uh, we could uh, um, uh, get the merits for an accelerated approval. Why? Because we are expecting on FRIDA, on this FRIDA, the, this phase 1B, we are expecting to double at, at least the, the current, uh, the current um, efficacy data that has been shown by gilteritinib, which is um, we, the drug which is currently approved for these um, patients have, having the FLIT3 mutation, and which is only providing modest, modest uh, uh, benefit to, to this patient. We are talking here less than three months of event-free survivals, 25% of CR. So we think that we can easily double this because of the preclinical data that we have about uh, the um, showing the synergism between Yada, uh, uh, our compound, and, and gilteritinib. And we are right now um, running FRIDA in the US. It's an, a US only trial. Yeah. Uh, we have 15 clinical sites open. It's a trial led by the Mass General Hospital, by the, the Dr. Amir Fati. And uh, we have completed the first cohort. We are starting right now the second cohort. So we hope that uh, in the second part of next year, we will be able either at, at EHA, but certainly at ASH, to uh, to feed the market, to feed the community with the first row of data that is going to be, to give us a glimpse if we are on track to double these uh, in clinical responses. So we are very much excited. It's, it's a fantastic drug. It's a fantastic combination. Uh, the uh, preclinical data is amazing. The clinical proof of concept that we have done in, uh, in AML uh, um, and feed patients is also amazing. So we are we are very, very excited. So we, we've also seen uh, numerous different kinds of positive collaborations. Uh, Chase Cancer Center and NIH, to name a couple. Uh, will these give rise to combination, potential combination therapies? Oh, yeah, very much indeed. No, we, we, we were so happy and honored when, when NIH was uh, choosing us. Uh, as you know, the CRADA agreements are based normally under the fact that it's only one molecule chosen by a mechanism of action. So our was the DLSD1 inhibitor chosen by the NIH. And uh, since then, since we signed the CRADA with the NIH and CI, we have got numerous, numerous uh, uh, manifestations of interest to start a number of investigator initiated trial with different combinations uh, um, and um, with Venetoclast, with other, I mean, these are all ongoing conversations still under, under um, I mean, we, we cannot make public that, except one that has been already made public, and, and for that I would like to mention, which is a, a clinical trial which is going to be started soon, basically uh, led by the Mass General, um, uh, sorry, by the Memorial Sloan Catering Center in New York, in a first-line um, certain disease, small cell lung cancer patients, um, I mean, led by the, the, the group of uh, Charles Rudin. This group was uh, basically publishing last year a fantastic paper. They did a set of experiments with our molecule, with Yada, and they were able to dissect and to show the community why our compound was basically making visible the, the, the small cell lung cancer tumor cells 
um, to the immune system. It was a fantastic journal of thoracic oncology paper. And they were so excited and they were so thrilled by the results that they were basically addressing a petition to the a request to the NIH to start a clinical trial with our compound in this particular set of patients. So they are starting to do so. And we expect to, to, to see in the second part of next year some, um, some initial results as well from this investigator initiated trial. Great. So we've covered a lot. So what should investors focus in on in, for the next 12 to 18 months? Well, as I said, on the next three, four months, you should be laser focused on us on CNS, which is a very hot spot right now, on borderline personality disorder, which is virgin lands uh, in commercial terms, which is an enormous opportunity where we can be the first player being a phase three uh, company in the space um, and a space where we have seen lots of interest uh, from the big pharma. So there is a commercial confirmed interest from this large pharma in this indication. So this is um, our, as I said, our main uh, um, and most uh, immediate catalyst. This can be transformational. And um, for the ones who are really focusing on oncology, I mean, we are expecting a second a second uh, part of 24, plenty of results with the clinical re uh, trials that we are um, having ongoing with Frida in AML, uh, second line, uh, um, FLE3 mutant patients, but also in neuroendocrine tumors with these fantastic uh, uh, trials that have been initiated by uh, renowned groups in the US in at the Fox Chase Cancer Center and very soon also coming soon to your screens uh from the from the memorial uh Sloan Catherine Center. Great. Th thank you, Carlos, for taking time to help us understand Horizon. Thank you all for joining us here today. If you'd like to learn more about Horizon, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thank you. <laughs>